Welcome to another episode of last week's comics today. It's a decent sized week, but let's get straight into it. So first we have the new Sean Murphy White Knight, and I almost didn't get this. I guess there was an issue with the cover, cover A potentially, and uh, I think some of it was delayed. So possibly not everyone got this next week, but should be getting it this coming week. Um, I certainly hope you do because this is excellent. I've enjoyed everything Sean Murphy White Knight has done so far and um, that we're now getting into Beyond is awesome. I love it. I already love it. And here is some art from the book. And it is fantastic. I'm just going to say this is a great read. I highly recommend all of the White Knight stuff. This is great. Highly recommended. If you haven't read the previous, really, three volumes of White Knight, then go get those. Up next, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Annual. Um, I wasn't originally going to get this, but I grabbed it off the rack, just mainly out of curiosity. Um, I've previously commented about giving up on the Sophie Campbell storyline, but waiting for the return of Tom Waltz. There is a story coming later this year with uh, Tom Waltz and the Pantheon that's going to kick off, I think, in June. But this is not Tom Waltz. I am unfamiliar with Junie Ba, however, this kind of makes me a fan. The art is great, the story is very well done. It is basically talking about everything that I had a problem with in the Silva Campbell stuff. About how much is going on in Mutant Town after the bomb, and how they are basically each on their own, how they are not operating as a family anymore, there is a disconnect, and they are trying to reunite, and they wind up fighting this Pretty cool, weirdly designed fear monster. Let me see. So, this thing. But it is really well done. A lot of it is happening in text boxes, so it's inner monologue. It is color coded, so you know who's talking. But we do get to this moment later here, which is awesome. If you like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but you haven't been reading the ongoing, the long-running IDW series, this is a good standalone place where you could jump in if you wanted. Um, and even if you are, like me, unsatisfied with the current ongoing Ninja Turtles storyline, grab this. It is great. Next. Step by Bloody Step, issue two. This is a four issue mini series. I commented on the first one how it is essentially a wordless comic. We get a lot of art, but our main two characters do not speak. And I was saying that I didn't think enough dialogue would be present in the series that we could do a translation, but I now question that assumption because there is. A surprising amount of dialogue in this. This is a small box. Just further examples of the art of the book. It is gorgeous, and despite being essentially a wordless comic, there is a surprisingly deep storyline in here. So this isn't a lot of text, but here is a bit more. I am starting to question whether or not it will be translatable if we get more. But this is incredibly well done. I mean, doing a word this comic is incredibly difficult, and this is pulling it off brilliantly. I absolutely recommend getting this. Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, issue six. All right, so this is definitely the start of a new story arc because we get this comment about it being six months later. So we have our cast now in a new place, trying to adjust to a new life, and still feeling the pull of the old life and what that does to each of them. It is well done. I do recommend it. I also recommend, and this is probably the only time I recommend doing this, also reading the solicitation text for each of the issues. There is 
additional clues, additional information about what is going on, more so than what you see in the comic itself. Shadow War issue one. This is an alpha before the main crossover starts in Deathstroke, Robin, and Batman. This actually leads into Batman 122, which it should say here at the very back. Well, that's something else. So here it says to be continued in Batman 122 out next week. I will probably get that. This is surprisingly good. I thought it was going to be an okay crossover. I'm really not. Um, my expectations as far as crossovers and really more specifically event books is they are going to start out well and then ultimately be disappointing. This one does start out very well, which is already uh, more than I expected out of it but I will probably get the other issues just to see where this goes. There were, so this is not drawn by Capullo, um, Bogdanovic, but there were, there's specifically panels where I really thought it was Capullo. I mean, we get stuff like this. We get stuff like this, which looks like Capullo, specifically Roz over here, but Something in essence is going on with the Lazarus Pits spinning out of... I've only been reading Robin of the three titles. I've only been reading Robin. I did read some of the Deathstroke Inc. book, but not the most recent issues. So I don't know uh, everything that gets set up here. This is again Capullo Ask with the super short ears. Um, I, I prefer short ears on Batman. The underlying Shadow War is Deathstroke does a thing, and the League of Assassins, led by Talia at the moment, uh, goes against Deathstroke Inc. Basically, everyone associated with Deathstroke, and Batman and Robin are caught in the middle. I guess more so Robin than Batman because of family relations, but. Uh, I don't know. This is proving to be rather interesting, and I'm going to see where it goes. I don't remember how many issues this was planned to be. It was uh, six or seven, but I'm probably going to get this. As I said, it's a very good beginning. I get Dark Ages issue six. This is the end of the miniseries, and I believe the end of Tom Taylor working for Marvel. In the last issue, I was unsure how this was going to end. I thought more needed to happen than one issue could fill. I, I'd probably buy a toy of this if they were to make one. That's just cool. But uh, this ends well. Things do wrap up. I did read one review that called it rushed and in my opinion rushed is more about the production of a thing. So if the art I would say if the art looked rush or the story felt rushed, but instead I think they were referring to the speed at which things happen. And there is a bit of pause in the beginning where things are being set up and then everything happens pretty quickly once the two teams, the, um, I don't even know what to call them if there's a word for it, Team Apocalypse versus Team Storm? I don't know. I don't know how to refer to the heroes in this, but I guess heroes and villains clash and a bunch of the villains are being mind controlled. Um, a bunch of the villains are actually also heroes that are being mind controlled. So once those groups meet, things do go very quickly and uh, we do get more dinosaur out of bus art, which is fantastic. I love it. Dinosaur on a bus. So it ends well. Basically, this cast up against this cast. It ends well. If you weren't reading, then I recommend getting the collection of this, which should be coming soon. Lastly, there is Hulk issue five. I am, I've been unsure about this title for a while, and I think I'm mostly reading it for Ali's art, which is amazing. But I do, I don't know, the story's, the story's okay. I just don't care that much about the Hulk. And I I think Kate is writing better things than what is on display here. 
So I'm a big fan of his Rebel Blood and again some of the other independent books he's done, Baby Teeth. But this is interesting. It's just not. I mean, it's a good excuse to see Ali art. I just don't think it's the best thing that the two of them could be doing together. And I kind of wish Ali would get back to... I mean, he can take the Marvel paycheck, sure. By all means. But I do wish that um, there could be an independent book that he would own the character. You know, get paid that way. Anyway, it's... The art's nice. The story's pretty good, too. But mostly, the art's nice. That's everything I got this week. Of these, I'm going to say... Step by Bloody Step is pick of the week. Batman White Knight was most anticipated read. I was going to be upset if I left the shop without this, and I'm glad, once again, that I was able to get a copy. But this, this is pick of the week, for sure. This is incredibly well done. The story is, again, deeper than you would expect from a wordless book, and the art is just incredible. Here's another two-page spread. Just incredible. I love it. Love everything about this. I hope you get this, that you try it for yourself. And um, go ahead and get the collection that, uh, once again, I'm sure is coming because everything gets collected these days. As always, I get all of my books from a local comic shop. If you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.